It is bizarre. A moment ago, gunfire and bombs. Yet today we pass through the checkpoint without any problems. Welcome to the YPG, the Kurdish militia in Syria. We enter Hazaka from the north. The city center is intact. There is no sign of the fierce fighting against the IS terrorist troops that raged in the south of the city. The children greet the YPG enthusiastically. In the courtyard of the YPG headquarters, the mood is clearly relaxed. The military staff are playing football. As is comrade Luand. Luand is his nom de guerre. The Kurdish officers use neither real names, nor do they wear rank insignia. Comrade Luand was, as he says, directly involved in various battles. He now coordinates the various ethnic groups in the fight against IS. This task becomes increasingly important as the Kurds advance further towards the south. Lewin's people show us the southern part of the city. At a roundabout on the city limits, the portrait of Havis al-Assad still stands, the father of Syria's embattled president. Assad's eyes are riddled with bullets. In early July, Assad's regime still controlled this district. Then Islamic State fighters took control with their suicide missions. And finally, the Kurds encircled the IS fighters and liquidated them, with support of American fighter jets. According to the YPG, the IS lost 386 men. <laughs> Also present are the YPJ, the Kurdish women's units. These Kurdish female soldiers are now patrolling the district that was conquered twice in a single month first by AS, then by the Kurds. Interestingly enough, Assad flags and soldiers are still present on the territory conquered by the Kurds. Typically, enemy emblems are removed immediately. But here, Kurdish and government checkpoints operate peacefully close to each other. Later, we even meet two of Assad's men at the headquarters of the YPG. They are in uniform and armed, even carrying hand grenades. They are members of an anti-terrorist unit within the Assad regime. Two of Assad's men are among the Kurds. A new alliance? Comrade Luand puts this into perspective. Defying the chaos of war, daily life continues in Hazaka. The scenes on the streets almost resemble Western neighborhoods, at least to an extent that would be unthinkable in the IS controlled Raqqa. We're on our way to a funeral. Gathered in a hall are the men on the left side an image of the PKK leader, Okalan, in the middle, and the women on the right. Among the women is the grieving mother. On August the 5th, she lost her son, Mehmed. Comrade Luand has come. He is accompanying Gazan, the commander. 
سعر البلندي وهم سعروا بطريقه سعر البلندي واضح بدو يمشي سلكه موجوده ونبج هذه المده خلاص نو تاع داسبيك نو تبتش تبتش نو مرباتي شيدا نو تي بزاف هيش بايتا كيرات they claim 21 Kurdish men and women lost their lives in Hazaka. The battle lasted 39 days. The following day, we drive to the Kurdish front lines on the top of Mount Abdulaziz, southwest of Hazaka. A detachment of the female YPJ troops is also stationed on the mountain. Even though slightly further south, IS fighters are on the lookout. This does not affect today's spirits. The Kurds feel safe. The women, too, have a nom de guerre and don't reveal their real names. I don't know English. Comrade Rosa shows us one of the two new bunkers which the Kurds recently completed. A few months earlier, they chased IS militia from this area. The Kurds know the mountains. They are in their element. Lewin and his commanding officer, Sword, don't want to draw the border at the current defensive positions on the mountain. Rather, the mountain is crucial for further operations against IS, such as an attack on their headquarters in Raqqa. <laughs> it's the <coughs> mountains of Abdulaziz. It's a really important region. You know what? For, uh, before, before starting any operation on Raqqa, uh, we got, I mean, it's, that's really important getting the uh, mountains of Abdulaziz. Back to Hazaka, the city free of IS fighters and the headquarters of the YPG. Today is a big day for Comrade Luand. Together with his soldiers, Luand prepares a reception. They are expecting a distinguished guest. Everyone undergoes security checks. The women who have been invited must also be scanned for weapons and explosives. And then he comes, Hamidi da Hamal Hedi, the governor of the autonomous Kurdish canton, Sizir, an Arab sheikh. The fact that the governor of the canton is an Arab carries obvious political significance. The Kurds are building alliances. In the conference room, under the portrait of Okalan, the head of the PKK party currently imprisoned in Turkey, sits the Arab sheikh, protected by his private guards. Comforted by the arms they bear, cooperation between Kurds and Arabs will be discussed. One common enemy is obvious, IS in the south. But today the YPG feel especially threatened in the northern regions. Comrade Luand explains what the YPG think of Turkey. Outside we meet a distinguished figure, Michael Enright, a British Hollywood actor, and since early 2015, a member of the YPG, he also cautions against Turkey. And so Germany, you know, I would say, and the West in general, reevaluate your, your relationship with Turkey, because these have not been in our, in, in our friends at all in the fight against ISIS. They've not been our friends at all. They have not. To the north is the Heroes Cemetery, Hazkaz Daujar, named after the first YPG martyr of the city. Here they lie in rank and file, the martyrs, men and women side by side, laid to rest by Gravedigger Sabri. Spatial, what can you do? Yani, 
There are always new graves. The heroes of the most recent battle still need to be put to rest here. The cemetery is on a large patch of land, but it looks like it could soon become crowded.